Fighting Neo Geo Max 330 Mega no Dexteki Taiken Neo Geo System SNK Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Meso Tarek and our continuing series, Neo Nostalgia, where I take a look at my favorite Neo Geo games of all time, and today we're playing Sengoku 2. It's an absolutely wild beat em up with a hilariously fun story that I absolutely love experiencing time and time again. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But our main villain is laughing at us, so we better go set him straight. This is definitely one of the older Neo Geo games developed by SNK, and it has that older Neo Geo graphical vibe going on, which is not at all a bad thing, but there is really a separation in Neo Geo generations as to what the games look like, and this is from the pre modernized era if there's a better term for it let me know down below but this is an incredibly good beat em up it might not rise to the level of something like streets of rage 2 but what is on offer here is a ton of fun and i love the personality of this game you'll just get these teleports and end up at a completely different area sometimes they make contextual sense in what's going on and sometimes they're completely out of place but it all makes sense within the universe of sengoku 2 but right off the top of the mechanics, you're going to have a sword in your hand the entire time. You have different attacks, and you have a transformation ability as well. I will show it to you in a little bit. Honestly, I prefer playing the game without it, but that's just me. It's totally up to you. But I love as you slash through your opponents. They split at the torso, and their upper half just basically slides down across their body. It is just a fun look, and when you beat that guy, you just randomly rock it up into the air, get eaten by a dragon, and dropped off on its back for your first boss fight. Your movement throughout the universe of Sengoku 2 is never anything other than amazing and completely random, and I love that you're just sitting on this undulating dragon, fighting a boss as things go on, and it basically fades into a completely different designed boss. Now this isn't the first time you'll be seeing this character, because some of the bosses do go on to be normal opponents later in the game, but that was kind of arcade 101 back in the day. The boss you fought in level 1 or level 2 would be a standard opponent in level 5 or level 6. But now that we've beaten him, there's a time travel mechanic. We're now going to 1940x and we get this pseudo mode 7 scrolling effect which looks so good for its time and place. But now we were basically assuming fighting in medieval Japan. Now we are in World War II. There's rats scurrying around, soldiers jump out with rifles. It just completely changes the vibe up, and I love that about this game. It never feels stale from start to finish. You're always seeing something new, but you still get those samurai-style characters popping up as well. So now it's samurais in a World War II European village. It makes no sense contextually, but within the game of Sengoku, I absolutely love it, and I accept it. These bigger battles, how you're player can face the top or the bottom of the screen as well and attack up and down. It just has a great sense of flow to it. The combat is great and it has very good hit detection. Sometimes in beat-em-up games I say if you're not lined up perfectly you don't hit and that always annoys me. In Sengoku 2 if you miss an attack it's on you. But now we have this Onsen demon. It looks like he's just holding a bucket of water to pour on the rocks in the sauna and you need to hit that bucket up to attack him. The bucket is his weak spot. Not his hand, not his head, but the bucket. It's just so strange and so funny, but it works. I would love if there was a little bit of animation in the water in the background there, but I guess I just couldn't get to that at this moment in time in the game. It's small little bits of detail like that that I wish the game had, but really honestly they're not that big of complaints. And we teleported to that demon on the boat from World War II, and that's what I mean. We were fighting in this European village against men with guns, then we fought a demon on a boat holding a sauna ladle, and now we're back in World War II again, and this soldier wearing a breastplate and holding an axe comes out. It is just wild, over the top, nothing makes sense, and that's what I love about it so much. And then suddenly you get transported again, and you're fighting samurai on horseback, and you cut their heads off. But Sengoku 2 also has a really fun soundtrack, so I'll let you listen to that for a bit. But honestly, you can't go wrong lopping heads off on horseback, it's great. But here's that music, so go ahead and enjoy. <laughs>
has kind of a World War II marching drum vibe going on. I will let you listen to some different music later on because it always changes up. But you will see that I did transition, and there are three different characters that you can transition as. And there's nothing wrong with any of them. I just prefer your standard character with his katana in his hand. But it is up to you how you play this game. That's the great part. There is no wrong way to play it. You get to pick and decide what you like better. Some people might like the transformations a bit more. For me, some of these characters have slightly more reach, but they're just not doing it for me as much mechanically. But now that we've defeated that fox, we go on to fight this woman who's transformed into a larger fox. I'm sure there's a lot going on with Japanese lore and history here that I'm not aware of, but we can become a wolf that basically has a... You know, a thousand hand slap attack with its paws. It's kind of like Honda from Street Fighter, except in dog form in Sengoku 2. And how often do you get to string that sentence together contextually? It's probably the first time anyone's ever actually said it. But leave me a comment down below if you thought it before. But now we're moving on to 1990X, which would have been modern when this game came out. But now is basically 25 plus years ago. And that makes me feel really old and I'm not honestly that old. But it's just so much fun that this game's constantly transitioning. We went from feudal Japan to World War II to now what would have been the modern day 90s and we're in a city with people running away as samurais phase into existence. And when you hit them, you can see their skeleton in the middle of them. It's just a ton of fun. That's why I included this game on the list. Every single time I play Sengoku 2, I have a good time. And if you have a second player next to you, you have an even better time. Sengoku 3 is a very good game, but it doesn't live up to the heights of Sengoku 2. And that's why this is the one I chose for the playlist. But leave me a comment down below and tell me what your favorite Sengoku is. And you'll see we teleport from 1990 something to what looks like the base of Mount Fuji to have another boss battle against this other deity here with that cyclops in the background of these different gods showing up. It's just visual flair and vibe across the entire game. You're never going to get bored with what you're looking at, and that's what I love so much. Because a beat-em-up, honestly, from start to finish mechanically is exactly the same thing. Scroll to the right, sometimes go to the left, sometimes take an elevator, but otherwise, you're basically just attacking your enemies. So having that visual variety is 100% fun, and this dude here with those giant legs, it's just such a creepy look. One thing is I wish that background there was people moving out or they hadn't put them there because you do have pedestrians running away in some spots but these static images of the people not actually walking down the street maybe they shouldn't have left those characters on the street because you notice that they're not actually moving. But one more taste of the soundtrack as it is quite good. I'll be back in like 35 seconds and talk more about the history of Sengoku and why you gotta play it. But this is just one of the weirdest vibes in the entire game. Enjoy that soundtrack. <laughs> Again, just a really fun soundtrack, and those lips in the background are such a unique look. They even preview it in the intro to the level, but then suddenly we teleport onto a ship with what looks like ghosts of our ancestors fighting epic battles in the background. And I just love that you have the ferryman in the back bringing this demon in, a little bit of Symphony of the Night vibes with the ferryman moving a la carte around. And I just love the colors. These are very bright, very vibrant colors, but they do work for what they're going for. And after we defeat this enemy right here, it gets even wilder. And that's what I love so much. This gigantic burst of water is just going to suddenly shoot from the bottom of the screen and a whole dragon head just pops out that you need to fight. This game is just spectacle. The mechanics are good, the graphics are good, the soundtrack is great, and it's constantly showing you something new and exciting. And this should definitely be in your rotation for Neo Geo games. If you've never played it before, you owe it to yourself, if not me, to go ahead and play it. Because now we've finally gotten through all of the different levels, and the villain here, he is just not happy with his fake Infinity Stone gauntlet on his hand there with those four faces. And he's going to teleport us up to his flying fortress with four dragon heads popping out of it, and you get this giant green moon in the background. 
Sengoku 2 is just fun, especially if you're playing with a second player. If you like beat-em-ups, if you like Neo Geo games and you've never checked this one out, there's a ton of fun to be had here. Sure that all another Neo Geo video next Tuesday on Video Start the Week, but that's all I got for you today. Bye-bye.